and use math to support your answer for a kinetic and potential energy. Just a quick review, potential energy is energy of position. It's basically what's stored in an object. Um, it's going to be able to do something later on, but the higher an object, there's more potential energy, and the more mass it is, the more potential. So those are the two things, is the height and the mass, okay? So formulas, I want you to see the formulas. Um, these two formulas mean the same thing, just that this is talking more about gravity. So gravity on Earth, gravity on another planet will be a different potential energy. So as we get more into astronomy, we'll kind of reapply this. This is also potential energy, but it's dealing with weight instead of, which is what that kind of means. Mass times gravity is weight, so that's just a different way of rewriting it. I'm typically going to use this equation right here. Um, all of the units are straight across here, so everything that you need to do to label and appropriately use the right units to make sure you're doing everything correctly. Uh, the big key is gravity. Since we're dealing with gravity on Earth, we're going to use this number. is 9.8 meters per second squared. You don't square anything for that. It's just what it's called because as we talk later on down the road, what does that mean? But just for an understanding that all gravity is that unit on Earth. Okay, so every time we're dealing with G, we're going to talk about that. <clears throat> so here is, again, it's a, uh, an equation. There's a neat little triangle. As we're going to talk about it. Use different tools to help you learn how to derive an equation so you can plug in and find different things. So the example I'll talk about here is if I want to find potential energy, it's sitting on top. Everything across the bottom is multiplied. So I have potential energy is mass times gravity times height. Simple, right? Well, what if I don't want that? I want to find the mass of something. So I'm going to get rid of mass. So what I have, I've crossed that out. Mass. And so what I'm left with is potential energy on the top and gravity times height on the bottom. Well, maybe I want to find the height of something. How high up is something? Height is potential energy over mass times gravity. One more. I want to find gravity. I'm on a different planet. I want to know the gravitational attraction on that planet. So G is potential energy over mass times height. These are just different ways to use that little triangle to derive an equation. Okay? So I want you to have that as a tool. <clears throat> so we're going to start with a sample problem. So potential energy, there's our little triangle. A uh, block is sitting on a platform 20 meters high. It weighs 50 kilograms. How much potential energy does it contain? So one thing I always do, and it helps me to stay organized, is I write out what I know. I call it my parking lot. So I don't know the potential energy. I do know the mass is 50 kilograms. Gravity on Earth has not changed. That's a, just a unit. Remember I told you to memorize that? And height, of course, is 20 meters. So we're going to write it out. This is what I know. I know my equation is potential energy because it asks for it. So mass times gravity times height. That's my formula. Always write the formula. It helps you stay organized. So potential energy we don't know equals 50 kilograms. Always have your units because you're going to simplify and make sense later on times 9.8 meters per second squared at times the height of 20 meters. Okay, I've written everything out. Um, 50 times 9.8 times 20 is some big number. 50 times 9.8 times 20. I plug that in my little trusty calculator. I come out with 9,800 joules because joule is my unit of energy. Circle my answer. Boom, I'm done. Okay. That's showing my work. I'm showing how I set it up. I showed how I got to this point. Okay? So that's question number one. So one other round of this is just working with the same thing. Um, a baby carriage sitting atop of a hill is 20 meter, 21 meters high. The carriage with the baby weighs 12 kilograms. The carriage has how much energy? Write my parking lot. Potential energy we don't know. Mass of this is... Uh, 12 kilograms. Gravity has not changed on... Oops, I take that off. Gravity on Earth has not changed. Why is it doing that? And the height is 21 meters. 
This is what I know. So again, if I've isolated what I don't know, it's easier to find. Let's write out my equation. Again, why is it doing that? So isolating mass is 12 kilograms times gravity of 9.8 meters per second squared times the height of 21 meters. So 12 times 9.8 times 21 is 2,469.6 joules. Comma there for place value, boom, done. Okay? Two problems, showing you how to do the work, how to set it up, how to basically pull this apart so I have a value, okay? Kinetic energy. So again, we're now doing a different form of energy, which is motion. The faster an object moves, the more kinetic energy is produced. An object has the most when its movement is the greatest. So it's the faster it moves, the more kinetic energy it has, but it also has to deal with mass. Mass and speed are the two things that we're going to look at. And speed is kind of a, a, a vaguer word. I like velocity much better. It's not how you... I hate when it does that. V-E-L-O-C-I-T-Y. Okay? So I want you to understand speed and velocity mean different things. Okay? So here's our equation. Well, I'm going to show you how to use it. Again, there's different ways of deriving. So this is nice to have because, again, if I want to isolate one piece of it, there's what I do, okay? This is the square root function. This is all of how you set it up, okay? So an example problem. Kinetic energy. You serve a volleyball with a mass of 0 0.5 kilograms. Ball leaves your hand 30 meters per second. So what do we know? Kinetic energy, mass, and velocity, right? I don't know it because it's asking it. My mass is 0 0.5, or no, 0 0.05. See, again, it helps to even have the right uh, 0 0.05 kilograms. And my velocity is 30 meters per second. Okay? My formula is kinetic energy is 1 half mv squared. That's my equation. So I'm going to rewrite. 1 half mass of 0 0.05 kilograms times 30 meters per second squared. 30 times 30 is 900 meters per second. Okay, 30 times 30 times 0 0.05 kilograms and one half of that. So 0 0.5 times 0 0.05 so this is 0 0.025 times 900 which gives me 22.5 joules of energy okay very very small amount of energy but it does have energy but just think about it. that's the mass okay let's do another one the car is traveling with a velocity of 40 meters per second, has a mass of 1,120 kilograms. The car has what kind of energy? Kinetic energy, mass, and velocity. Okay, we don't know that one. The mass is 1,120 kilograms, and the velocity is 40 meters per second. Okay, so write out your equation. So then we're going to plug this stuff in. So 1 half mass of 1,120 kilograms times 40 meters per second squared. 40 times 40 is 1,600 meters per second times 1,000, oops, then we're going to multiply these two things together. So 1120 times 0 0.5 is 560 kilograms times 1600 is 896,000 joules of energy. So it's definitely a lot bigger of a number because, again, this object has significantly more mass and I think there's more speed. Okay? Mechanical energy. That's the combination of potential and kinetic. Remember, potential and kinetic are changing constantly. So again, you are transferring one form to another. 
So this is the equation for mechanical energy. So what we're going to do is we're going to show you how this works. So um, we're talking about a cart. Its height is 15 meters, mass is 12 kilograms, gravity is this. So let's figure out how to do this. Um, so first let's find our potential energy. So that's one half of the equation. Potential energy is mass times gravity times height. Mass is 12 kilograms times gravity of 9.8 meters per second squared times the height of 15 meters. Multiply those three things together. So 15 times 9.8 times 12. And I get 1,764 joules. Okay? Kinetic energy. How much kinetic energy is there? That's the second part of this. All right, so 1 half mv squared. So we know the mass of the card is 12 kilograms. But it's not in motion. So its velocity is zero. Let's try this again. Its velocity is zero meters per second squared. And then we take half of that. Well, zero squared is zero times 12 kilograms, one half of that. So half of 12 is six kilograms. Oh my goodness, why is it doing that? Okay. One half, so six times zero is zero. So zero meters, zero joules. So there's no kinetic energy. So at the very top of the hill, it hasn't even moved yet. It has zero joules of kinetic energy. So our mechanical energy is PE. I don't know why it does that? PE plus KE. So our PE is 1,764 joules. And our Ke is zero joules. So add those two together is 1,764 joules. Okay? So that combined now carts moving two thirds of the way down. What's total mechanical energy? Remember mechanical energy is Pe plus Ke. Okay? So remember, energy is changing form. So we're going to mathematically prove. So what is our potential energy first? So let's see how much potential energy we have. Mass times gravity times height. Cart's mass has not changed, so it's still 12 kilograms. Gravity has not changed. Okay, but its height has. Its height is now 5 meters. If I multiply all that together, I get 568 joules, right? Well... We know that our kinetic energy, we don't know, so we have to figure that out. But originally, our mechanical energy, our total mechanical energy from the prior equation is 1,764 joules. So we knew that before. But we don't know and our potential energy is 568 joules and kinetic energy. So if we re-derive this, basically we're subtracting this. These two things together make that. So this plus this equals that. Well, if I really look at that, I'm subtracting 1,764 minus 568, which gives me 1,196 joules of mechanical energy. That's how we do that. So at this point, the total energy is still 1,764. So that is still 1,764 here, 1,764 here. But we had 0 Ke here and all Pe. Here we still have a total of 1,764, but we've now taken and we have 568 Pe and 1,196 Ke. So it has turned into mostly kinetic energy as it's moving down the hill. Okay? I want to see if you can solve the next few based on now your new understanding. All right, let's see if you got it right. So the car is traveling with a velocity of 40 meters per second, has a mass of 1,120. What kind of energy is this? Uh, we need to figure out a car has 
kinetic energy because again with mass and velocity the two things are isolating so kinetic energy mass velocity we just want to figure out what we got we don't know that mass is 1120 kilograms velocity is 40 meters per second so our equation is ke equals one half mv squared so v squared so 40 meters per second squared times 1120 kilograms and then half of that so if I do this, 1120 times 0 0.5 is 560 times 1600, 1600 meters per second. Again, this was a prior problem, 896,000 joules. Okay, let's try the next problem. Okay, so we need to calculate something on a platform 20 meters high, 79 newtons. Newton is, just to show you what that means, um, Newton is a force, that force weight one, so it's just a deriving of it. So potential energy is mass times gravity times height, but we're going to combine mass and gravity and call it the force times height. Still means the same thing. So we have 79 newtons times a height of 20 meters. 79 times 20 is 1,580 joules of energy. What is the kinetic energy of a 2,000 kilogram boat moving at 5 meters per second? All right, let's see how you did. Kinetic energy is, we have a mass of 2,000 kilograms. We have a velocity of 5 meters per second, and we don't know that. The kinetic energy is 1 half mv squared. So V is 5 meters per second. We square that times 2,000 kilograms, one half that. So 5 squared is 25 meters per second times half of 2,000, which is 1,000 kilograms. So 1,000 times 25 is 25,000 joules. How are we doing? There's a bell at the top of the tower that is 45 meters high. The bell weighs 190 newtons. Remember, newton is a force. Mass times gravity combine. The bell has energy. Calculate it. All right, so potential energy is mass times gravity times height. So this is, again, our force. Mass times gravity equals force. Okay, that's what we call our weight times our height. So 190 newtons times our height of 45 meters. 45 times 190. <clears throat> this is 8,550 joules. Okay. Another one. So is kinetic energy of a three kilogram ball is rolling two meters per second. All right, is kinetic energy of a three kilogram ball that's rolling two meters per second. So we have kinetic energy mass and velocity. So kinetic energy, don't know. Mass is three kilograms. Velocity is two meters per second. So let's write out our equation. All right, so we know velocity is two meters per second. We're going to square that times our mass of three kilograms. 
and then we take half that. So two meters, two times two is four meters per second, times half of three is 1.5 kilograms. 1.5 times four is six joules. Okay. So. As you've seen, the variation of mass and velocity affecting kinetic and potential energy, you've seen how high it affects it. So I want you to be able to do the calculations so you're demonstrating the mathematical model to understand how it's applied to your lab. Okay?